Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is a, another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the series that I'm putting together that has a special emphasis on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Uh, you've found the program, you have at least some interest in it, you've got it installed and working, but you don't really know how to get around or do much of anything with it. Uh, these videos are intended to be watched in order so that you can follow along. Uh, we have sort of a stepping stone process here. Uh, step one in my videos were basically just to get into a generic orbit, you know, to show how to get up off the ground and get the vessel into orbit. And then in the next few videos we looked at plane alignment and then we're getting into uh, actually rendezvousing with the ISS. Uh, in this video we're going to look at docking. Uh, docking is a separate process from rendezvous. Uh, rendezvous is the, is the uh, process of actually just catching up to the target object. In this case, the target object is the ISS. Uh, but once you've caught up to it, then you need to uh, close the distance, the last few uh, meters, the last few hundred meters, and get in there and actually dock with the, uh, with the object itself. So uh, hopefully you've already seen all the previous videos and have, a, and have those skills so that you can now uh, follow along with what we need to do here. Okay, so we have uh, this scenario picks up where I left off in uh, one of the previous videos where I've you know already completed the rendezvous. You know we're right here by the ISS. We're just 1.6 uh, kilometers out and we have a small difference in velocity of just 2.77 so we're actually moving toward the ISS currently, uh, but it's a very slow rate. It'll take a while to get over there. What we want to do at this point, and um, let's kind of back up to our one of the, something that we covered in the previous video, is the comm nav. Now that we're here at the ISS, we want to make sure that we have one of our navigation, at least one of our navigations set for for one of the docking collars. And the way we find out that information is by pressing Control i on the keyboard. That'll bring up the object info. And then over here, under Object, we go to Vessel. And then over here, we pick the ISS. Now, we don't really need the transponder anymore. But it's done its job. We're already here at the ISS. We don't care about the transponder anymore. What we care about are these docking collars there are five of them, and they're currently the status is free, which means that there's nothing else docked to any of these, uh, to any of those at the moment. If you ever get here to the ISS and it says status, uh, you know, occupied or whatever it is that it says, then that means that that docking collar is unavailable for docking. Something else is already there, but, but in this scenario, obviously nothing is docked. So. We, I picked uh, docking collar number three, and I set that to nav two. And the reason I picked number three again is because number one actually um, will have you docking so that it appears like you're docking with the ISS upside down, and I don't really like that. What you can do is you can actually just go through these nav and set to all the different docking collars. Well, you can set up to four of them, obviously. One of them can't be set. So if we want... Uh, we've already got number th three set, but if we wanted to, we could go to say number, uh, we could go to the third navigation and we could set the third navigation to say docking collar number four, which would be 13710. And I'll just, I'll show you why you might want to do that. So let's, that's 13720, we want 13710. And let's go to nav four. And let's set that to uh, docking collar number five. So that's just going to be 137 even. Like that. Okay, so now let's go back to docking NFD and let's turn this off. And let's go from nav one because that's the transponder. We don't need that. Let's go to nav two. And what we, can, what we need to do here to see the docking collar, let's close this out because we don't need it. We press the HUD button, this HUD button. And when we press the HUD button, you'll see, let's kind of rotate, rotate the vessel a little bit so we can see it better. 
you can see it creates this uh, graphical corridor. It puts these boxes in the sky. And this is to show us that if we move our delta glider down here and these boxes get, get much larger as we get closer to them, this will get us lined up with the docking collar. So that helps us get oriented with the ISS. So if we come all the way to the end, and actually we don't have to go all the way to the end, we could go down in the middle. But if we come all the way to the end and we fly straight through these boxes, we will fly straight into the docking cor col uh, collar for dock three. That's called the dock corridor. Now, the reason you might want to set nav three and nav four is because sometimes the docking corridor might be inconvenient. It might be in a bad place. So if we switch to nav three and then press HUD, we can see that this docking collar is over here. We would, we would fly over to this point and then come through the docking corridor this way to dock with that collar. And then we go to nav four to, to select the fifth docking collar and press HUD. And that one's basically in the same place. It's just a little bit lower. And again, I just kind of like number three the best. So we'll go with, I'm gonna go with that one for mine, but you can pick whichever one you want. Now the way that we get inside of the docking corridor, remember wherever the velocity vector is pointing, that's where we're going. So let's switch over to linear translation. Translation. And let's move the velocity vector down and over like that. Now normally, I'm pretty experienced at this, so normally I would just come into the ISS and I would set the velocity vector maybe here. But if you're new, Rotation. which obviously you are if you're watching these, video, this, these videos, you may want to give yourself a bit more time and you can give yourself more time by setting uh, the velocity vector maybe all the way out to there. Again, once you get some more experience, uh, you don't need this much distance to get lined up. But let's go ahead and just set it for there. Now you can see we're still moving forward at two meters a second. And if things are happening too fast, uh, just slow things down. Rotation. Switch to rotation. Make sure your nose cone's pointed at the velocity vector. Translation. Switch back to translation and then just use nine, which is reverse translation, and that will slow you down. You see the, vo the velocity's going from 2.54, you can see it here or here. And we're just slowing ourselves down a little bit. Now you can do that. Rotation. Translation. And get the velocity vector lined up on the corridor a bit better. You can do that. And then in order to make sure that it doesn't take forever to get over here, once you've got yourself slowed down, you can use a little bit of time warp. 10x. Just be careful with it. And notice that the velocity vector is starting to slip off the corridor a bit. So we'll go back to real time. We'll make sure that we have linear translation selected, which we do. And then we'll translate the velocity vector back over top of the corridor. Now you'll notice that the ISS, we can't see it anymore. So it, it may be a little disorienting when you can't see it. So what we can do rotate. is we can switch to rotation. We need to keep the velocity vector in view but we can kind of rotate a bit to the right and we need to rotate maybe a little this way kind of roll you know we're kind of getting ourselves lined up with the corridor here so I'm just rotating around that and that'll be good enough now I can rotate up just a little bit and eventually the ISS will come in view you don't need to worry about the ISS um, not being in view because this triangle points to where it's at. For now we still need to move toward the corridor and this velocity vector is slipping a bit outside the corridor so let's go back to translation, translation and let's move the velocity vector back toward the corridor. Just point it on one of those boxes and if you need to uh, you know speed things up again you can use a little bit of 10x or you can just you know a little bit of forward translation will get you there faster also, but I don't recommend I, when you're this close to the ISS, you want your difference in velocity to just be one or two meters a second. You don't want to move too quickly at this point when you're new. When you're a little more experienced, you can move 
you know, around the ISS when your velocity is higher, but when you're new, you want to keep things fairly slow. So we're moving uh, into the corridor, which is getting a little closer. Let's go ahead and warp time forward. We can see some of those boxes, and some of them just disappeared. That might be a little, uh, again, disorienting. So if that happens, just simply rotation. switch to rotation and go ahead and rotate yourself up now so that you can actually see you know, the, uh, the, the corridor, and maybe you can start to see the ISS come into view like that. Translation. Switch back to translation. And now we just want to bring we want to bring the uh, velocity vector up so that we can see it. So I'm, you can see this triangle it points to where the velocity vector is at. So I'm using just a little bit of uh, you know, various translations to do that. There it is. Okay, now we're we're off the corridor. You know, we're out to the left. So let's let's start getting our vessel. Let's start getting our vessel aligned. Once we have something that looks like this, we can actually start using this information to get ourselves lined up a lot better than just trying to fly inside this corridor. What we want to do is we want to have this red X and this plus sign in the center. So we'll switch to rotation, and I'm going to rotate the vessel this way, which may seem counterintuitive because you notice the the ISS is, seems like it's going away from us, but that's but we're getting lined up. Once that X is on the center that way, now I need to bring the X down. Now I have one of my orientations correct, or it's almost correct. And I'm just using tr I'm using rotation to adjust the X. The other thing that I want to adjust is my roll. Notice this red triangle here you want the red triangle to be white and you want it to be facing up so we'll do that by putting in a little bit of uh, six that will roll the vessel this way and now I'm rolled but notice when I did that the X slipped a little bit what's happening here is the ISS actually has a little bit of a little bit of angular momentum there's a couple of things that we can do if we press F3 and we select the ISS and hit OK, we are now actually inside of the ISS. If I press F1 and I kind of zoom in, I'm actually, I have the ISS selected as my vessel at this point. What I can do in order to eliminate the angular momentum, and I do recommend that you do this as a new pilot, is I can hit Kill Rotate. And this tells the ISS to stop rotating. Now this will only last for maybe three or four minutes and then we would technically have to come back to the ISS and do it again. There's another way to do this using a remote vessel control, but uh, we'll cover that in some, other, in some other video. So now I'm going to press F3, and I'm going to go back to my delta glider. Now that I've told the ISS to stop rotating, it won't be so difficult to get lined up. But notice when I came back here, my navigation changed, so I need to go back to Nav 2 and I need to get myself lined up again. So with rotation thrusters, I'm just going to rotate down so that the X comes up. There it is. Now a little bit of one to bring the X to the center. There it is. Now I need a little bit of roll because I can see this right, this white triangle is a little bit off. So right there. Now we're, now we're good. Now notice that it's holding position much better since I told the ISS to stop rotating this will hold much better but there's still one more um, piece of the puzzle that has to be solved a couple things this yellow uh, crosshair needs to be brought to the center and this yellow arrow points to the direction that we're currently going and we're currently going toward that yellow crosshair which is exactly what we want now before we get any farther along something we want to do is press F8 and we want to come down here and we want to open the nose cone I think it's down here yeah uh, where's oh here it is <laughs> so press uh, pull that button and that will open the nose cone if we look outside you can actually dock with the nose cone closed but obviously obviously that's sloppy you don't want to do that so when you get in 
you know, reasonably close. You want to open the nose cone so that you have the docking collar ready to go. Nose cone open. Now we got the audio alert. The nose cone's open. So again, we need to we need this yellow crosshair to be in the center, and this yellow arrow points where we're currently going. If we want this to get to the center faster, translation. We translate to get over there. So I'm putting in a little bit more translation in, in two different directions. You don't want to overdo it because all the translation that you put in, you're going to have to also take it away. So just be a little patient and let that crosshair kind of work its way over. And if you're impatient, a little bit of time warp is okay, but just don't overdo it. Notice we're getting really close. We're inside the docking corridor. Now I want to start translating in the other direction. Okay, notice that crosshair is now on the center line, so I want my arrow to be on the center line, and now I only want to be going this way, because I still need to come a bit to the right. And that arrow is pointing to the right, that crosshair is coming over, that's what I want. And that crosshair is dropping a little bit below the line. You don't have to be, you know, you don't worry too much about it, but just, you know, work with your translation thrusters a little bit. And I'm using control thrust at this point, not just you know six eight nine and those when you're this close in you need the finer precision so make sure you hold down control to get these last little bit of movements and I'm backing off here because we're getting really close that crosshair is almost at the center it just needs to come up a little bit and to the left a little bit notice that my X is still very well centered it's a little bit off so the ISS is starting to pick up a little bit more rotation but it's not enough to make a difference really. Okay, we need to maybe go down just a little bit more. Okay, notice this line here is almost at the center and this one's still coming up. So we're almost perfectly lined up. Okay, everything's looking good there. We need to go down just a little bit more. Now I'm gonna to switch to rotation. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of one because I, I can see that the X is just slipping off to the side a bit. Translation. Now I'm going to translate. I need to go like that, and everything's almost lined up. Now we just kind of want to null everything out. There we are. It's absolutely perfect right now. It won't hold. We're still 72 meters out, but it's absolutely perfect. We're going straight toward the docking... Uh, collar at a rate of 0.5 meters per second so it's gonna take us a little bit of time to get over there and see that's slipping a little bit that's that's normal it won't hold because this there's just different permutations that cause things to slip so all we have to do here is just a little bit of control 2 and once that gets back to the center then I'll control 8 to eliminate that little bit of velocity Okay, again, we're basically perfect. Okay, control eight. You can see that X is slipping slightly below the center, but it's okay, as long as it's in this white area, you'll, you'll be able to dock. So if it slips down there, uh, in my opinion, it, when you, especially when you're new, you're better off not worrying about it because if you try to do too much at once, it'll just be really frustrating. So take your time here. You know, we're 40 meters out moving at a half of a meter per second. So we're get, we'll get there, it just takes a little bit of time. Notice we're slipping again, so we'll put in a bit of control, we're on linear, so a little bit of control one, because we need to push ourselves to the left a little bit, and a little bit of control eight, because we need to push ourselves down a little bit. And these movements are very, very fine, very, very precise. If I were just doing, you know, six and eight and all those we would be that would be way too much movement I'm gonna go ahead and go to rotation, rotation. and a little bit of two that's the wrong direction a little bit of eight rather to bring up the X translation. now back to translation and a little bit of two and a little bit of one there we have it okay now we're getting really close so I'm gonna slow down now 
instead of 0.5 meters, I'm going to go all the way down to 0.25. And we're in good shape. We don't need to worry about this anymore. If we want, we can press F1, and we can just watch ourselves dock. Take one quick look. Yeah, we're slipping a little bit. Actually, we're slipping more than a little bit, so let's go down a little bit of... And we'll slow things down just a little bit more. But we'll be okay. And that's a docking. We show capture and hard dock. Congratulations. And docking is very satisfying the first time you do it. The first time you complete a, a whole flight, you know, you take off from KSC or wherever, and you get your plane aligned and you rendezvous and you and you get docked. It's it's a very, very satisfying feeling. In fact, you know, I took a screenshot the first time I did it, not that anybody could tell the difference between one docking and another, but um, in the first time I got to Mars, I took a screenshot. The first time I got to Venus, I took a screenshot. It's it's a very very satisfying feeling. You should feel uh, you should feel proud of yourself if you've accomplished it because I mean there are a lot of people that you know look at Orbiter and it's just too much for them. And here again, we're at the day. You know this is another nice advantage to setting this up so that we will establish our uh, dock during the day because things just look better. You know, there's more stuff to look at. Uh, when you're on the night side, everything's so pitch black that you can't hardly see anything. So docking during the day is much better. Now, there's one other thing that I'll talk about before we uh, leave this docking video. Of course, we'll dock a few times, but in order to practice docking, Let's go ahead and save this scenario. Let's exit out of Orbiter for a moment. If you go into your Orbiter default scenarios and pick a, a Delta Glider scenario that's docked at the ISS, this is a really good way to practice docking. Take a sip here. So we're, we're at the ISS and we're already docked. If we press F8, you know, we can get a different view, whichever one you prefer. <clears throat> Close this MFD out. We don't need it. What we can do, this is, what we can do is we can actually use this scenario to practice docking in a, in a couple of different ways. And I actually did this myself when I was brand new to Orbiter. What we, uh, what I did was since I'm here and I'm docked, we press Control D to undock. And what that does, that just moves you. Undocking confirmed. That moves you backwards away from the docking collar at just like a meter a second. And what you can do is you can switch to translation thrusters and just immediately start pressing a little bit of six to start moving forward, and you'll redock automatically because the ISS won't have time to, you know, or to turn too much. Hey, you heard the noise? So now I'm docked again. Okay, so that was pretty easy. So let's do something maybe a little more complicated. Let's undock. And let's put in a bit of nine to kind of push ourselves back a little bit. And let's just get farther back away from, uh, you know, from the, from the docking collar. And let's also figure out which docking collar this is and bring it up on our nav. Looks like it's this one and press HUD so that we have that information on the HUD. And that's the transponder. So we'll press Control i and we'll bring up the vessel, uh, the ISS, <clears throat> and we'll go to the COM nav, and we'll see if we can figure out which docking collar that is. Would have been easier if I looked at this uh, when I was already connected to it. So actually, let me do that. Let me go back to the go back to the go back to the ISS and dock to it. 
And hopefully I can do that just by going forward. I just want to find out what number this is. I don't know off the top of my head. So I'm just going to see if I can move back to it and dock. And once I'm docked to it, the status here will change and it'll tell me which docking collar this was. And if I don't get it here, then I'll just exit orbiter and restart the scenario. Okay, we're moving forward. Hopefully we're close enough. I think we are. Okay, okay, it's number two. See how it updates here? Okay, so I want a 137.30. That's going to be the one that we're going to play with here. So 137.30. And then bring up the docking MFD. We can close this out. We don't need it anymore. And we need to go to that navigation frequency and copy that information to the HUD by clicking HUD. Okay, so here, here's what I was trying to get at. You can undock. Undocking confirmed. And since you're just undocking, things will stay pretty well lined up. So you can maybe back off a little bit using translation thrusters. You can see I'm pressing 9. It's increasing my relative velocity. Notice it's a negative number. That means I'm getting farther away. And this is also indicated because it's green. When it's green like that, it means you're moving away. And when it's yellow, it means you're moving toward. So you can just sort of play around, maybe put in a little bit of rotation to just kind of mess things up a little bit. Okay, like that. And now let's redock. Let's fix this situation and redock. So we'll go back to rotation. We're on rotation. We need to get our X in the center. And we need to bring the X up that and now we just need to Translation. translate back toward the ISS and notice that we're not perfectly lined up things are things are a bit off so we have to fix this and this is a, just this is just a good way to practice to go from you know to go in and out making you know small changes and this is actually how I learned to do the docking myself so I'm using control thrust to bring the arrow up a little bit and we're almost at the center. Okay, everything's pretty well centered. We need to go a little bit to the left. We need to go a little bit down. Okay, and everything's looking good. Let's kind of zero it out. A little bit to the left, a little bit up. And let's move forward a little faster. We're at 0.34 meters a second. Okay, we need to go up a little bit. You can see that yellow line. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, rather. Notice our X has slipped a little bit, but we're not going to worry about it. We're too close. And once we get down to maybe 5 meters, I'm going to press 9 just to slow down a little bit. Okay, slow down just a little bit more. Hey, everything's it's looking good. It's not perfectly centered, but it's good and we'll be fine. So if we press F1, we can look outside. We can watch ourselves dock. And dock. Okay. Now another good practice. Let's uh, press control I. Let's bring up the object info for the ISS. What we'll do is we'll bring up a different uh, collar and we'll go, we'll, we'll undock from this collar. We'll fly around the ISS and redock to another collar. So we'll go from uh, number two to, let's just go to number five. Just picking a different collar that we haven't used yet. I don't even know where that's at. So 137.00, that's that one. It's unused, and it shows here. So let's do that. Let's. So we'll select dock. We don't need this anymore. We want number five. 
uh, or rather nav3, which is the docking color number 5. And we'll copy that information to the HUD. Now let's undock. Undocking confirmed. And we'll put in some 9, which is reverse translation. We're just pushing ourselves out away from the ISS a little bit because I need to see the docking corridor. I don't even know where, I don't know where docking, I don't know where docking port five is even at. So we need to get some distance out from the ISS. We're at 26 meters, 27. Let's go ahead and go out to a couple meters per second. So we'll just push ourselves out away from the ISS, maybe 200, 250 meters, something like that. If we look at the external camera, we can see what we're doing. We're just pushing away getting some distance. And again, we'll go to we're about 200 meters, so let's go 10x. That's good. Now that we're at 200 meters, let's press 6 to eliminate this velocity so that we're not moving away from the ISS anymore. Okay, relative velocity is basically zero now. Now it's zero. Now I can see that the docking corridor number five is just actually below. So basically all we're gonna do is go down a little bit. Now something about the docking corridor box, the box actually indicates which way is up uh, for, for that docking collar. And this docking collar is showing that this side is up. So in other words, we need to roll over that's also indicated here. You can see that red arrow. The red arrow, again, should be white, and it should be pointing to the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to rotation, and I'm just going to roll over. And while that's rolling over, I'm going to take a sip here. And we're almost rolled over. Get ready to press five, probably now. A little bit more. And there we go. Now, as before, Translate rotation. with rotation, we want to get the X in the center. And if necessary, we can press F3 to get inside the ISS, and we can kill rotate just tells the ISS to stop rotating. Now we'll go back to the Delta Glider. Translation. And we'll go ahead and start moving forward now. And we can see here that the this uh, yellow plus signs over here and this is saying that we're moving this way so we're moving the wrong direction we need to put in a little bit of three to translate ourselves over to the right and we need to translate up a little bit now I'm just gonna do a little bit more forward translation to move forward faster than one you know faster than just a half a meter we at least want to be moving at like a meter a second now a little bit of 10x, just to speed things up. Okay, we're down to 100 meters. Let's go back to real time and uh, straighten things out a little bit. You can see our x is obviously no longer lined up, so let's go to rotation. And that's going to be 1 to bring it to the... To, we want a yaw to the left. And I need a little bit of 8 to yaw up, or pitch up and a little bit of roll there we go translation. and back to translation and the yellow plus sign here you know we're moving toward it so we're moving in the right direction and we're 80 meters out let's slow things down a bit let's go down to uh, half a meter a second because we're pretty close And let's get ready to start doing everything with control thrust at this point. Rotation. Let's rotate a little bit. We need to yaw to the left, so a little bit of one, because our X is slipping. 
go with that. Translation. And now we need to translate down and translate to the left. Okay, we're almost lined up. The yellow plus here just has to come over to the uh, has to come to the left a little bit, which means we need to tr you know continue translating or continue moving to the to the right a little bit. We're almost there. Rotation. Rotate just a little bit to the left. The ye the yellow or the white X is slipping a little bit, and if you notice that it slips consistently, what you can do is you can overcompensate a little bit to the right to make up for the difference and translate up just a tad translate to the left because we're almost centered and we're basically uh, slipping a little bit okay, we've only got 30 meters to go let me go ahead and put in a little bit more forward translations to get over there faster But this is just a good way to practice docking. Just undock from one port, back off from the ISS by a couple hundred meters, and then redock. So let's go down to about 0.25. And we need to translate a bit to the left. Translate here. X Rotation. is slipping a bit. Translation. Translate just a tad. This is all control thrust again. These movements are too we're too close in to be doing anything more than that. Everything's really well lined up. We've got a ten meters to go, eleven meters to go. Rotation. Go ahead and rotate just a tad. Translation. Translate down a little bit to the right. And we're only a few meters out, seven meters. So we're basically right where we need to be and eliminate that last little bit of translation as we're closing in and we're all set so this time we'll watch it from the uh, first person view here and there we have it So there, we undocked from here, we backed up 200 meters, and then we came and we docked to this one. Um, and that's something you can, you know, you can do, you can undock from one, actually I think one is, yeah, I think that's one, and then come around to a three and move all around the ISS. It's really good practice, it'll, it'll um, you know, obviously help you make sure that when you do finish when you do complete your actual rendezvous that you're that you're able to dock without any problems i don't really feel like docking itself needs any more explanation it's it's quite simple and it's really just it's something that just requires hands-on experience you could watch somebody else dock a dozen times and it's just not something that you're going to know how to do until you do it yourself uh, we i think i will go back and talk a little bit more about the rendezvous process um, before we move on to other things like going to the moon or anything like that. So that's going to be it for this video. And if, uh, of course, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And look in the description down below. I've got a Facebook page where I post all my videos, put some occasional pictures up, links to various articles and things like that. And I will see you in the next video.